Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here. And tonight we're going to be reading from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through verse 25. Again, we'll be reading from Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 through verse 25. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I want to give you thanks for today. I want to give you thanks for my life, for my wife, Teresa, for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I want to give you thanks for loving and forgiving us, Lord. And I want to give you thanks for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that will watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask. In your name, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us, and may we have the courage to apply these verses in our life. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Alright brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 through verse 25. The story of Adam. Learning about our ancestors often helps us understand ourselves. Adam and Eve, our first ancestors, were the highlight of God's creation, the very reason God made the world. But they didn't always live the way God intended. Through their mistakes, we can learn important lessons on how to live rightly. Adam and Eve teach us much about the nature of sin and its consequences. Adam and Eve, chapter 2, verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east of in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The river watering the garden flowed from Eden, where there it from there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pish, Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Hav, Havila, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and ox and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Jaihan. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. These are the words of our Lord our God, brothers and sisters. Let's break down some of these verses. Verse 7. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. From the dust of the ground implies that there is nothing fancy about the chemical elements making up our bodies. The body is a lifeless shell until God brings it alive with his breath of life. When God removes his life-giving breath, our bodies once again return to dust. Therefore, our life and worth come from God's Spirit. Many boast of their achievements and abilities as though they, as though they were the originator of their own strengths. Others feel worthless because their abilities do not stand out. In reality, our worth comes not from our achievements, but from the God of the universe, who chooses to give us the mysterious and miraculous gift of life. Value life as he does. Now verses 9 through 17. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah. Where there is gold, the gold of the land is good, aromatic resin, and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Jaihan. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. The name of the tree of knowledge of the knowledge of good and evil implies that evil had already occurred. If not in the garden, than at the time of Satan's fall. Where the, tr where the tree of life and the tree of knowledge were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil real trees, two views are often expressed. Number one, the trees were real but symbolic. Eternal life with God was pictured as eating from the tree of life. And number two, the trees were real possessing special properties. By eating the fruit of the tree of life, Adam and Eve could have had eternal life enjoying permanent relationship as God's children. In either case, Adam and Eve's sin separated them from the tree of life and thus kept them from obtaining eternal life. Interesting, the tree of life again appears in a description in Revelation chapter 22 of people enjoying eternal life with God. God gave Adam the responsibility for the garden and told him not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Rather than physically preventing him from eating, God gave Adam a choice, and thus the possibility of choosing wrongly. God still gives us choices, and we too often choose wrongly. These wrong choices may cause us pain, but they can help us learn and grow and make better choices in the future. Living with the consequences of our choices teaches us to think and choose more carefully. Why would God place a tree in the garden 
and then forbid Adam to eat from it. God wanted Adam to obey, but God gave Adam the freedom to choose. Without choice, Adam would have been like a prisoner, and his obedience would have been hollow. These two trees provide an exercise in choice, with rewards for choosing to obey and sad consequences for choosing to disobey. When you are faced with the choice, always choose to obey God. Verses 18 through 24. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. God's creative work was not complete until he made woman. He could have made her from the dust of the ground as he made man. God chose, however, to make her from the man's flesh and bone. In so doing, he illustrated for us that in marriage, man and woman symbolically become one flesh. This is a mystical union of the couple's hearts and lives. Throughout the Bible, God treats this special partnership seriously. If you are married or planning to be married, are you willing to keep the commitment that makes the two of you one? Yes, I am. I am married, brothers and sisters, and I am willing to keep this commitment. The goal in marriage should be more than friendship. It should be oneness. God forms and equips men and women for various tasks, but all of these tasks lead to the same goal, honoring God. Man gives life to woman, woman gives life to the world. Each role carries exclusive privileges. There is no room for thinking that one sex is superior to the other. God gave marriage as a gift to Adam and Eve. They were created perfect for each other. Marriage was not just for convenience, nor was it brought about by any culture. It was instituted by God and has three basic aspects. Number one, the man leaves his parents and in a public act promises himself to his wife. Number two, the man and woman are joined together by taking responsibility for each other's welfare and by loving the mate above all others. And number three, the two become one flesh in the intimacy and commitment of sexual union that is reserved for marriage. Strong marriages include all three of these aspects. And verse 25, brothers and sisters, the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Have you ever noticed how a little child can run naked through a room full of strangers without embarrassment? He is not aware of his nakedness, just as Adam and Eve were not embarrassed of their innocence. But after Adam and Eve sinned, shame and awkwardness followed, creating barriers between themselves and God. We often experience these same barriers in marriage. Ideally, a husband and wife have no barriers. Feeling no embarrassment and exposing themselves to each other or to God. But like Adam and Eve in chapter 3 verse 7, we put on fig leaves, barriers, because we have areas we don't want our spouse or God to know about. Then we hide just as Adam and Eve hid from God. In marriage, lack of spiritual, emotional, and intellectual Intimacy usually precedes a breakdown of physical intimacy. 
In the same way, when we fail to expose our secret thoughts to God, we break our lines of communication with them. Great reading, brothers and sisters. I hope you guys uh, pulled some, some great verses out of tonight's reading. Some verses that stick out at me is are, are the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. That's verse 25. Verse 23. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. Verse 18, where it says, The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. These are all verses that, that stuck out at me, brothers and sisters. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to give you thanks for tonight's reading. I want to give you thanks for for, for, for making us a, a suitable partner. For not making us to live the, to live this life alone. You saw that it wasn't good to be alone and, and, and you made us a suitable partner for each one of us to to seek and, and to find I pray that I pray for for the married for my married brothers and sisters that you just fill them both with the holy spirit and you fill them both with the thirst for for your for your word to get knowledge from your holy scriptures and that you fill them both with, with, with a loving and, and forgiving heart and for my brothers and sisters out there that are that are not married I pray for each one of them that you fill them with your Holy Spirit and that their Holy Spirit gives them patience and, and that you fill them also with a thirst for your word and for, for your knowledge and your holy scriptures. And that, that they have patience and, and seek out the right partner that you have made for each and every one of us. And that when they find this partner, that that partner is, is a, a Lord-fearing partner. A, 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 a lord Loving and fearing spouse. And I pray that. That all. All, mar all, all my married brothers and sisters. And, and all my. Brothers and sisters who, who aren't married. That. That we all just have an understanding. That in a marriage. There are three people. There is the husband. And there is the wife. And there is you, Lord. And marriage is just not between a husband and wife. It's between a husband, a wife, and God. I love you, Jesus, and, and I ask that you forgive us all for our sins. That you give us all a discerning heart, that you fill us all with your Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit removes any evil inside of us. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. I ask that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, cancers, diabetes, arthritis, degenerative back disc disease, any uh, chest pains, any bad knees, any blood clots, any parts of our organs that, that's not working correctly. Anything that's causing us pain or making us sick, whether it is physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, I ask that you heal us in the name of Jesus. I ask in the name of Jesus that you break chains of all addictions, whether they are in us or someone we love. I ask that you break chains of addictions of drinking, 
of smoking, of drugging, of lusting, of money, of power, of greed. I ask that you break chains of sin in the name of Jesus. If there's any sins that we enjoy doing. And if we choose to do this sin, I ask that the Holy Spirit convicts us heavy in our heart and makes us feel sick in our stomach until we repent and turn away from these sins. I give you thanks for my wife, Teresa. And I ask you to, to bless, heal, and protect Sophia Borge. I ask that you fill her with your Holy Spirit and, and just heal her. And that, that, that you fill the doctors and the nurses with the Holy Spirit. And that they can help her out. I ask that you fill her mother, her father, her brothers with the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit gives them comfort and strength and understanding. And that you just strengthen them, Lord. That they find peace and that you give them peace through the Holy Spirit. In this, in this time I ask that you bless, heal and protect my mother That you heal her of her blood clots I ask that you bless, heal and protect my sister Elizabeth That you help her recover from her back surgery Until she's no longer in pain I ask that you bless, heal and protect my sister Yvette Help her with her sciatic nerve problem I ask that you bless, heal and protect uh, Ma, Mrs. Betty Payne that you heal her of her knee, of her knee pain that she's having. That you heal her knee right now in the name of Jesus. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect Henry Tim, Ricky Joel Alvarez, all your prayer warriors and, and everyone that they love. I ask you to bless, heal, and protect everyone at the Kingdom Music Family Ministry, everyone at St. Paul's Lutheran and Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora, and everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. I especially ask you to bless him and protect Brother Brian Trejo and his wife, Pastor Angel Morales and his wife and, and children, also uh, Brother Brian's children, and Pastor David and Angel Rocha and his wife and children. I just thank you, Lord, for, for loving and forgiving me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you, brothers and sisters. I hope you guys are having a, a great night. Good night. And you know we'll continue reading. <laughs>